if uh, Arctic comes up and doesn't see us and goes into the back, it's going to be chaos. Just wait on the side. Do not go wandering about on the motorway. to sea bay um initially i spent to go to northampton and the coach took me to leicester so we're gonna get into that in just a moment so i remember this is when i was working at my last job and my last job was obviously a night shift job working in the bar and obviously at a bar if you work in a bar and at night shifts you finish late so the plan was to go home to change sort my stuff out and then head out to the coach station straight once I've done that because also my coach ticket was booked for the morning <sighs> so obviously I was irresponsible the night before that um, sometimes after work we would have like staff drinks and stuff so I had clearly I had one too many and those years I've gone home as I said I've been tough I get out stay up until I need to leave out with enough time to head to the coach station and get on my coach. Now that did not happen. So as I've got home, I've obviously gone to bed and then two seconds later, I fell asleep. As I fell asleep, I've woke back up maybe two hours, an hour after that, how long it was, with a whole load. What? I mean, I was filming. Oh, 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 shit, shit. Um, oh. do you want to call me back after, yeah? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll be telling you, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, I'll just get the hell out. So, I just spoke her name into existence, as I mentioned, and she's called me. As I was saying, what was I saying? As I was saying, it would have been about two hours, maybe, that I've woken up. And seen lots of unlimited, like I've seen unlimited missed calls from her, a lot of text messages, because obviously I fell asleep, and like I said, I was supposed to have been on my way and at the court station for a designated time in the morning from my late finishing shift. So it kind of went left. I still rushed to the court station. I ended up getting a train to try and make the journey quicker. The train made no difference because I've got to train station come out do you know what i feel like i really and truly feel like i could have made it even just by a minute because i didn't make it and i'll get into that had i had got off and been able to rush through everybody i would have made it because the coal station is not far from the train station so i've got off trying to get past everybody a lot of people busy area you know so that already added on to time then i finally got there and the train, sorry, the coach isn't there. So, I, I first of all had to get myself together because all that running up and down I did is not for me. If this was like 10 year old me, no problem. I would have probably made it on time, but I'm not the same little boy I used to be. Like, I'm not fit. I get out of breath even more now. I get cramps from just walking and running. So, imagine me running 
yeah I knew I was on the neck and I just died that coach anyway so like I said I missed the coach so I just said cool whatever I'll just book another ticket and come for a different time I'll come later on now I've done that now so I've had to kill time I waited in the coach station I got food I went to the coffee shop that asked you why I went to the coffee shop because I didn't even get nothing I walked around I just tried to kill time in different ways and now time's finally been killed I've made my way back to the coach station this time I'm only 10 minutes away I went back to the coach station got on my coach cool everything's nice and as you've seen in the video the guys made the announcement the drivers made the announcement and I kind of had a weird feeling from before he even pulled up to the pulled over I should say so we've left the car station now and I'm just like impatient at this point because as I've said I should have already have been there but I've delayed myself but it's still it's just like he was driving very very slow and I get central London or anywhere that's like those parts of London is very much busy I get that but I just felt like Marylebone for example the distance from Victoria if you live in London the different the distance from let's say Victoria and maybe not Marylebone Hyde Park it's not that far why is it taking like a good 20-30 minutes to go around the corner if I go on my phone matter of fact we're gonna do that now we're gonna um do the distance we're gonna check the distance between the two because as far as I'm concerned they're not far from each other so let's type it in we're gonna do let's say Victoria Colt Station and Hyde Park I said Marylebone but we're gonna do Hyde Park because they're not as far from each other anyway Hyde Park Corner and it's 17 minutes if you get a bus it's 17 minutes if you walk it takes you 20 so explain to me why it took at least 30 to 40 minutes just to go around the corner and then it's taken a, like that, that one to go on the M-way it took even longer and I was supposed to have reached to Northampton for a certain time forget earlier I'm talking about with this ticket now and he's just driving mad slow on the M-way and it's like you're on a whole M-way this is not no normal zone where you have to go 20 to 30 miles per hour we're on a whole M-way I'm pretty sure the minimum speed is 60 miles per hour why are you going at 20 30 miles an hour well, what's the point I may as well have taken my 10 mile per hour scooter and just taken myself if this is what I was signing up for so we're on the M-way now I'm like finally beginning somewhere and I'm on the phone to Bay. she's come off the phone to me because um, she had to go and get ready and stuff please tell me why we're on the M-way now and like what 10-15 minutes have been in the M-way he's pulled over I'm like what in the holy water like what why is he pulled over for what reason have you pulled over because it's not lunch break it's not lunch time and you're not going to no strike what reason have you pulled over for please tell me why he's pulled over and it's been a good 5 minutes he come off the coach and I'm just saying to myself, there better be a damn good reason why you've come off this coach. Because you've just pulled over on the whole M-way. I don't think you've even pulled over where you're supposed to pull over. Because there's certain places you can stop. You've not even pulled over in the right place to pull over. You've come off the coach, not said a word to nobody. Bearing in mind there's multiple passengers on the coach. You come off. And then I'm looking at the window and I'm seeing on the phone. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing there? This is, it, it, this is not a chit chat. That's what I was thinking at first. And then he's just coming back on off. So it's like, I don't know if you're playing musical chairs. I don't know if you're on drugs. I don't know if you're crackhead. I don't know if you're doing this to wind me up. But I don't have time for this. Please tell me why he's come back on the coach now. And he's made the announcement. Talking about there's something wrong with the tyre. Da, 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 da. I, I just looked up and I was like, this has to be a facade. This has to be a dream. This has to be living hell. There is no way that he's announced this and said there's something with the tire. There's no way that I have missed the first coach 
to then get on this coach and then this has happened. So as I've said, he's pulled over the whole coach and announced that one of the tyres. And my whole thing is, why are these things not checked? I'm pretty sure before anyone drives a vehicle, whether that be a car, a bus, a truck, a lorry, a van, a bloody spaceship, you're supposed to check these things before, and especially with things like buses and coaches where you contain passengers and you're taking them around in public places. This shouldn't have occurred, this shouldn't have been the case. And it's not even that. The company don't even do refunds. They're very cheeky. If you want a refund, you have to pay extra to receive a refund with the ticket that you're buying. And more time, you have to pay additional fees for the ticket, whether it be additional fees for the return or for the service fee, whatever it is. So it's like, you lot have a nerve and that's why you lot do things like that. So that when people have these problems, they can't get their refund because they have to pay extra. And I just think that's quite cheeky. And it's like, it's just crazy. So that's happened. And then another coach has come now. Cool. Um, the um, two drivers were speaking amongst each other. And then obviously the plan was to take everyone that had, that had come off this broken down coach to go on that coach. Now... Before all of that, before we even got onto that other coach, they kept mentioning and asking like who's going to those three main places that they was asking and it was Leeds or it was one of them I don't remember the other two. But there was three main places they kept asking who's going to those places. But in the end of it, because he asked I was asked where I was going and I told him where I was going. So in the end, we all got on that coach. I just thought he was going to take those certain people and then call another coach for everyone else to go. No, everyone got on that coach. I asked before getting on the coach, should I get on this coach? And I was told to get on that coach. So I got on the coach. So at this point, the other driver, the new driver, is aware of where I'm going because he asked me, where are you going? So I thought because I told him and because I was told to get on this coach, I must be going to my destination even if it was after everyone else because that's what I was thinking maybe cool maybe they will start because they're going there first and then everyone else's destinations will come afterwards that's what I initially thought please tell me why because my thing is as well and please tell me why because when I go on these journeys I look on the map on my phone call me crazy but that's what I do and I did it on this journey and he's not he wasn't going in the direction of Northampton I was on the phone to Bay at the time as well and she was like go and ask the coach driver where is he going is he going to Northampton because he's past Northampton he's gone and taken the other, the other route like as if he's not going there so I've gone down the stairs because I'm upstairs I've gone down the stairs because the reason why I didn't want to go to him and ask him is because the whole thing of speaking to the driver whilst they're driving, you're not really supposed to do them kind of things. But in this situation, I need to know where I'm going because I really don't have time to be getting lost. And it's like, at this point, if you're not going there, let me off now so I can just find my way back. I, I cannot. So I've asked him, are you going to North Phantom? And he told me no. He's going to Leicester. When I tell you, I, I've never felt feelings before. When I tell you, the way I wanted to react, I had to hold it in. And my phone was going to die as well. It's not even like I could do anything. When I tell you, I, I actually did not know how to feel. As I said earlier, with the whole missing my coach and the um, tire... I felt like everything, I just felt like everything wasn't real at this point. Having to be stranded on the whole M-Way and then to then be stranded in Leicester. I felt like just ending it all. I'll be so honest with you guys. I felt like my life was actually coming to an end. Leicester. And I was just confused because as I said, I was told to get on that coach and they was informed of where I was going. So I thought that I was going to go to Northampton. So if that wasn't the case, why was I told to get on the coach? I couldn't believe it. 
I couldn't believe it. I still can't believe it now. Now I'm remembering that that she was mortified. I was mortified. So I ended up in Leicester now, and I got off the couch, and I just looked around, and I just had to sit on the roadside. I was in the car park. I had to just sit there, and just deep. What the fuck is actually happening to me in my life? I was just like, what in the hell did I do to deserve this? I know I missed the first coach and that was my fault and I take full on accountability of that. But what did I deserve to end up in a whole city that I didn't even book a ticket for? What did I deserve to do this? What did I actually deserve? Leicester. Leicester. And it's not even that. As I've even arrived there. There's nothing even there. It was like the valley, is it called a valley park? Whatever they call it. Retail park. All I could see was a McDonald's. So I was just like, (sighs) I was trying to take it in. I just looked up in the sky and said, at this point, God or Satan, one of you guys, just take me now. Because I cannot go on. The show cannot go on. The show must go on. The show cannot go on. I just went to McDonald's and I cried. I'll be honest. I, I just, I, it was just crazy to me. I was speechless. And I said, no, I can't be here. I cannot be here. And I was just like, also just thinking, how am I now? Now that I've ended up here, how am I supposed to now continue my journey to where I'm actually supposed to be going to? And also, I remember at the time, I didn't have much money so it's not like I could just book a cab and just be on my way because I needed to I had to have you have to use smart money do you know what I'm saying so then think about on the way back I was thinking about that too I'm like how am I now gonna make my way to go back home actually tell a lie I think I booked a return ticket for my house so it's fine I've never been so mortified and so questioning in my life ever I tried to call people that I knew to see if they could pick me up and I was just like I don't care I'll pay you lot whatever money because my payday wasn't much further away I was like I'll pay you guys whatever money you require please just come and get me take me to where I need to go I might need you to even pick me up and take me home because I don't even want to risk getting the coach after, after all of that but no one was even answering and by the time they did there wasn't even whoever I'd called wasn't even free at the time so I had no option none at all so I just felt like I was out of luck you know what it felt like you know like in them films that like, where where like I don't know like a kid or whatever like just goes on an adventure in the forest or the woods and then they go deep in the woods and they get lost and then it just doesn't end well from there that's how it felt when I was in that store. And I'm not even saying that to say this is a bad place. But I'm just saying because it's not where I'm supposed to be. And I'm stranded. I don't know the area. I don't have any battery on my phone like that. Like a whole lot of things. So in the end of it. It's just mad. Bay sent me money to get a cab. It's even that as well. The cab driver was moving mad. The first time I called the cab. It was unavailable or give me some mad price. I was like, we're not paying them kind of price. So I locked off the phone, called another cab company. He's come. I don't know what his issue was, if it was the wrong location or whatever it was, but he was just moving mad. In the end, spoke to the driver, put him in his place, got the cab, and then I ended up going to the train station in Leicester because the walk there was just not going to happen. So I said, cool. Went to the station and then it had to be a train thing from there. So I called, was it two different people that I called to try and rescue me? So as I said, I called people to try and help and rescue me, but they wasn't available at the time. It was either as I've got off, got out of the cab or as I was on my way in the cab. One of the two, but what got back, he got back to me. And obviously I explained everything that happened and obviously he told me he was in Brum. So the plan 
was or the suggestion was that I can get the train to Brom and he can take me to where I need to go from Brom but as I said my thing is with trains I'm very like panicky and scared to get trains especially when it's in places I'm not familiar with if it's like if I'm like on a train like where I live like going up maybe four or five stops cool but if I'm not familiar and I have to change trains as well it's just a bit like mm, yeah, you know what I'm saying so I said I'll stick a pin in that and I'll let him know I'll keep him posted but in my my phone's still low and I, I'm getting like wherever I am I'm stopping and charging it but I'm not really having much time to charge my phone so I'm in a station I'm having anxiety attacks I'm scared I'm petrified I'm mortified I'm just like this is not happening at this point I'm feeling traumatised this is trauma for me the fact that I've got a coach stuck and stranded on the M way and I was just seeing all them cars going by and it was just throwing me off all the way like it was scaring me it was giving me anxiety and then to get another coach and end up in a whole different city yeah if that's not traumatising then it's definitely not normal because that's not normal um, as I was saying so yeah I kept him posted and I just got a different train I think I got at least two or three trains yeah I still got it shout out to Bay actually I'm going to give her a shout out because she's going to watch this as well at some point stand my phone to me and reassuring me because I don't think I would have done it without her and that's the honest truth because I don't know where I, I might not even be here today that's where I looked at it as well like that moment like it's my last day and I'm I'm here I guess sometimes I can be a survivor so yeah I've got the second train now because I don't even remember what stations I was even going to now because it was one station I think it was like a couple of stops on the other train to then go to because I ended up going to the Phantom train station I remember PTSD is still a thing for me so I was like I don't really like being out late like the old me I've really transitioned because the old me I don't know where I was at but I don't like being out it's, it's, it's a scary place especially down them side it's just a bit you know ghetto so it was another captain once I'd got off the train I walked through I come out through the barrier and whatnot booked a cab and waited now it was a stupid little game with this cab driver I can't lie these cab drivers don't know how to, to actually come to the destination of where the passengers or customers actually want him to come because he's telling me he's there, he's there, he's there, he's not there and deep in this, as, a, as you obviously can tell from the story, I'm stressed to the core like I'm ready to just, like I said, call it quits I'm trying to hold back all the anger I had throughout the day of this so I'm getting a bit aggy with him because it's like listen I'm not in the mood for this I ain't got time just come to where I'm telling you to come so it's a whole back and forth with him I at one point hung up on him and obviously I'm speaking to Bay and I'm explaining the frustrations I'm having this cab driver and I can't lie to you I switched on her and I got mad at her shouting that like, probably the whole of Northampton could hear me if you heard the way I was shouting it was mad like, I was that livid because I was like, I was just like, there's no way, there's no way. I was so livid. In the end of it, I seen him. He was like, the other side of the station, but I don't know. I know the area, but I don't know the station like that. There's certain parts of the area I don't know. So finally, got on the cab. I felt a little bit better because now this cab is actually taking me to where I need to go. Because as I said, now I've come out the station, Northampton station. I'm in the area. Now I finally can go to where I need to go to deep in all this as well it was a booked B&B I booked a ticket to go to a B&B with Bay. she booked the B&B and what not or we went halves whatever it was but she was there she was there for hours waiting for me and I not even showed up it was a whole journey just to get there which shouldn't have been the case so I finally arrive and obviously when I get there and now I'm feeling much happier to see the B&B in person as well and also to see her 
finally come out of the car. I just, at that point, I'd forgotten all the emotions I had. Gave her the biggest hug. She wasn't really trying to hug me because she was mad because I obviously I was shouting at her on the phone. And I felt really bad. And I apologised to her. And I felt really bad. But once I reached where I reached, I felt so relieved. I forgot about everything that happened to me and her children and whatnot. It was great in the end. So bad things can turn into good things in the end, I guess. But really and truly and truly and really, Omiyo, Omayo, Omiyo, however the fuck you guys want to pronounce your company name, you lot deserve to be sued. You lot deserve to be shut and closed down. You lot deserve to be de refurbished. Because the fact that you lot had me doing that, forget the fact that I missed the first coach. That is completely my fault. I had no business drinking the night before and thinking I was gonna fuck it out knowing that it wouldn't have happened like that. I had no business doing it that knowing I had something to be for a certain time. But you lot done me real dirty. The fact that you lot knew where I wanted to go, if my coach was if I was not going to be taken to where I need to be taken to, then I shouldn't have been told to have boarded the coach. So the fact that you lot made me do that and then I end up in Leicester, the driver lied to me. You lot should be taken to court. You lot should be taken into custody. You lot should be charged. I want my money back. I really should have got my money back. Furthermore, I deserve more than the cost ticket because it's probably like ten pound, probably less than ten pound for what I paid. But I deserve some form of income back because that's unacceptable. And it's like I'm brave because since that's happened, I've been on the coach since. But it's like, even as I went on that coach, I was very skeptical and it's like, I don't trust you guys. I don't. And I wish I'd done more. I should have talked to Reg Play. I should have talked your name. And all that. Because I'm going to start taking people there because people keep blaming me. And I'm not with that. I'm not. But one thing I learned is to take some responsibility and to not do stupid things for when you have other things planned the next following day. That's one thing I, I've taken. Usually, when I do videos, I always have a moral story and try to give you lot lessons or not even lessons, but like, you know, a moral of the story. But I think the moral of the story for me personally is, as I've said, don't do stupid things when you know you've got plans the following day or the following night. Because it, look, look at the result. So, yeah, I ain't gonna do that again. <laughs> I'm not. But unfortunately, it's the end of this video, guys. It's been a, it was very much crazy. I still can't believe it happened to me. And that was how long ago now. I'm never, I'm never gonna forget that. I'm never gonna forget that. But yeah, more story times are soon to come. Make sure you guys like, comment, share, subscribe. Most importantly, subscribe to Dems2 Anti on YouTube. Stream my song as well, actually. Let me, let me tell you lot. Yeah, doing this music thing now, I've taken it another little level up. Go stream my song Wine on all digital platforms Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. Make sure you go stream. The link to stream the song will be in the description and my channel, like my main channel. Make sure you guys go, make sure you guys go and do that. Socials will be linked in the description as well as the outro as said before and you know what without further ado Over and out